In this video, I want to talk about how continents form and change throughout time. But before we do that, let's quickly review the formation of the Earth. Remember, the Earth came from the same place the Sun came from, from a solar nebula or a large cloud of gas and particles, which probably came from a supernova explosion from a long time ago. And we know this because of the presence of heavy elements on the Earth. Now, as this cloud coalesced because of gravity, probably pushed by an event like a supernova or a traveling black hole or something like that, and this process started and then eventually started coalescing to, into a star in the middle of this, the sun basically formed. But as the sun formed, it left around it a disk of accretionary matter that didn't actually fall into it, which each of these disks went on to become a planetary system. And this planet, planetary accretion disk coalesced into larger and larger chunks called planetesimals, which then coalesced even further to form protoplanets, which looks something like that. But over thousand thousand years, the protoplanets continue to be bombarded in clearing its orbits in processes that look like this. So it took a while for the Earth to actually start cooling down because it, it would be for a long time until the Earth could possibly cool down because of all the collisions that were happening. But eventually the Earth did cool down and it looked a little more like that where the crust of the Earth actually solidified mostly and you have these fissures which are still parts that are still kind of hot and over a field billions of millions and millions of years, it will start looking at more and more the way it looks like now. Remember that at the same time, like we talked on the layers of the Earth video, the Earth differentiated into layers because in, when it was this big ball of lava over here, the heavier elements sank to the middle, forming the core made of iron and nickel. Then the middle elements over middle density formed a mantle, such as with elements such as magnesium. And then the outside was made of the lighter elements, and that was just basically the crust of the Earth, which is the first part to solidify. But this crust, even though it's solid, it's kind of should be very brittle and be cracking because of the pressure coming from the inside and all the heat that's left over from the formation of this process and also still present because of gravity compression heating up the earth even today and also some radioactive elements which are in the core. Now this system eventually got hit by a massive object that we don't know where it came from or where it ended up but we know that we were hit because the consequence was that a large chunk of the earth was was split from the earth as you see in this picture and this debris material eventually formed a disk around the earth that coalesced into, into a different protoplanet which got trapped by the earth's gravity to form the moon and that's the call the giant impact hypothesis that we talked about notice that the moon did not come from the object that hit us the object that hit us was a mars sized object maybe mars itself that continued going somewhere into the, so, into the solar system but it was the chunks that came from the earth itself that formed the moon and we know this because the moon is made of mostly of mental and crust like material now here you see the, all the steps put in a line and basically the idea is that we were a large ball of lava that eventually solidified and gather oceans and eventually form the planet that we see today the, remember the atmosphere also went through a formation process and so did the hydrosphere and we talked about this when we did the formation of the earth earlier in the year remember that the hydrosphere came from collisions with comets and from the eruptions of volcanoes which is also from where the atmosphere came from and the earth was massive enough to trap enough gases to actually sustain an atmosphere and this atmosphere wouldn't change for a long time until the actual life were present on earth to make changes to the atmosphere in the process it took millions and millions and billions of years and it wouldn't be until about 1.5 billion years into the history of the formation of the earth that the first continents would appear the first 1.5 billion years of the earth the earth was pretty much a hot mess and it wasn't until the earth solidified and quieted down a bit that the that the, all that water that's coming from the volcanoes was allowed to basically stay as a liquid in the surface because before then all the water was basically staying as a gas surrounding the planet as you see on the second to last picture of the earth here so but eventually all those gases were allowed to to actually condensate and fall towards the earth as the temperatures cool down and as the surface of the earth cooled down and so you end up getting a planet to look a little more like this and most of the planet is covered with water with some small continental shapes around. Now where do these continents actually come from is where I want to talk about.